Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my FlossTube channel. Today is Monday, April the 1st. So happy Easter to any of you who celebrated Easter over this um, last weekend, the long weekend from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. Technically, a lot of people still call this Easter Monday. Um, unfortunately, um, many, many, many years ago, I actually did work um, at an organization that recognized Easter Monday as a holiday. So for a very short period of time, I used to get Easter Monday off, but uh, yeah, just that one organization, and I'm not even sure that they still recognize it. But anyway, so if you were celebrating, I hope you had a great time um, with friends, family, doing celebrations of however you do it. Um, I had uh, dinner with my parents, um, got my Easter present, which I thought was really hilarious because um, my, between my mother and I, I am the shopper. And so I actually, I'm the one that actually went out and bought the, uh, the Easter presents for my dad, my brother and myself, because my, it's something that you can't reliably get. Um, so when I saw them in the store, I phoned my mother and said, do you want me to pick these up? And she did. So uh, she kind of laughed when she gave me the gift bag and said, it'll come as a big giant surprise because <laughs> I bought it for myself. Anywho. Um, but it's, it's something that all, th it is a form of chocolate and it's uh, chocolates that the three of us uh, really enjoy. So it was quite funny that, uh, anyway, I bought it and got it back on uh, when I saw my parents. I will also forewarn you that my dad's birthday was in March um, and I got him this card that I am thrilled with. I love this card. Um, so uh, next time I go over to my parents' place, <laughs> I felt it was wrong to say, happy birthday, here's your card, I hope you really enjoy it. Oh, by the way, can I take it back right away? Um, so next time I go over to my parents, I'm hoping I can say, can I borrow the card back so that I can show you on a FlossTube video? It's not FlossTube related, I didn't make this card. I bought it, I bought it off of Amazon.com, had to ship it to those relatives that are the snowbirds, so they brought it back. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So hopefully I, I fully expect that he will be totally fine if I borrow it. <laughs> I, I will promise to return it, but I think it's fantastic. Um, anyway, uh, total asides. Uh, so if you are new to this channel, this is a channel predominantly, it's supposed to be about cross stitching. However, um, I have, uh, over the past year, um, gotten back into crocheting because of Cheryl, <laughs> and we always say it with a with a bit of a tone. Uh, happy Handcraft Studio. I was gonna say Studio Stitches Studio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Anyway, I'll put a link to her channel. If you're not watching Cheryl, you should. Um, anyway, um, and we blame Cheryl for a lot of things here. Um, so at the tail end of every video, I will give you an update as to what I'm doing with my crocheting. I have a little pile going here of uh, new crocheting things to show you. Uh, I'm filming this on Easter Monday. I really should have filmed it yesterday afternoon because it was lovely and sunny and glorious and all those lovely things. Um, but I didn't. So we're here on Monday in the evening. It's starting to get dark. Um, so at some point, depending on what I see in the camera, I may have to turn on my ring light, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and as always, um, it is around supper time here. So um, I make this comment periodically. I don't think I've ever really heard it on a video, but if you happen to hear some weird banging or thumping or noises, um, the kids next door tend to come out after supper and play for a bit. Um, so. And you know I'm pro let them come out and play. All right, with that, uh, thank you for all the comments on my last video. I've already proven to be totally unreliable where I said I was going to sort of aim for every two weeks. So here we are a month, at least a month later, probably closer to six weeks. Anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But 
Thank you all for all your lovely comments um, about seeing me return to floss tube. I really do apologize. I should have put something up. Uh, I know a couple of you were worried because you were con right, rightfully so concerned that maybe there was a health problem going on. Um, and there wasn't and I should have put something up saying don't worry about me health is all fine the stitchy bug has left me and I'm not doing anything cross stitch related I should have put something up even if it was just like a message like anyway note to self I also um, it was interesting uh, from the comments about um, many of you who are multi-craftual who sort of go I like the one who said, well, I haven't really lost the cross stitching one, but my quilting bug is suffering or my knitting bug is suffering. And yeah, we all have slumps, but it was really unusual for me to just like stop and had no desire to do anything. It was, it was a little weird. I kept saying like, this is, this can't possibly go on for, for a really long time. <laughs> Apparently it was. And there's a part of me that says probably if I had just sat myself down and started to work on something I think it would have come back so um, I've made a, I've made a mental note to myself um, that if I get to that spot again that I should just sort of go just just work on something whether you're feeling it or not and see if the feelings come back I feel like it's getting dark welcome to technical changes on the fly. Hopefully that'll feel like one less. All right. Okay. Um, so yes. Um, so thank you to those of you who said that you would be interested in a behind the scenes jingle ball thing. I'm starting to feel like it's kind of weird doing it now, but I might do it in July. And you're gonna go like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but we all know that there's a lot of Christmas in July things. So I might throw it into a July video. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of people who said, yeah, I'd really love to see, see a behind the scenes. I'm not really sure it's gonna be a see a behind the scenes. I think it's gonna be a talk about behind the scenes. <laughs> all the craziness sort of that was going on at that point in time. And then Sharon, thank you so much for your comment. Um, she participated in the Jingle Ball. She took Jeanette's class. And I'm always thrilled uh, when I hear about people who took a class and completed the project. It was a small project, which was great. She said she finished it in a couple of days. So yeah, I think that's great. Um, go in, learn your thing, put it into practice, finish the class piece, and then, you know, you've got, yeah. I thought, I thought that was great. So thank you, Sharon, for leaving that comment and letting me know that you had participated in that class and um, finished the piece. I think that's fantastic. All right. Let's get into some stitching. Um, I'm going to start off with my... <laughs> and I know you probably won't remember. And unlike the Stitch and Mommy, who does those really great before and after pictures, I'm not gonna do that but anyway I'm gonna start with the piece um, that I worked on at the March stitching at the library and so I continue to work on my Penelope's posies by Lindy stitches um, I got this as a full-blown kit from Nashville several years ago um, I believe the pattern is still available from Lindy Stitch's websites as a PDF if you're interested in it. Um, as is typical for me, I'm not really following her colors so much because, I mean, good grief, look at how much orange and yellow is in there. Like, we all know that's not me. Um, so I am using the kit material. So it was a 32 count, either white or antique white uh, does it say? No, it doesn't. Anyway, it was a 32 count Lugana, a, like I say, white or antique white. And here is my piece. It does not look for a really, really small, what, three by three, like it's going to take me 87 uh, visits to the library before I get this thing done. Um, here's what happened 
at this session. <laughs> I discovered I had two greens in the threads that I had in the bag and so these greens were the same but I had stitched this one and it was the other green and as I was sitting there at the library I was looking going like that that does not look right. So I unpicked it and <laughs> graciously said to everybody at the library, congratulations, I think I'm going to leave the library and I'm going to have less, less stitches in this piece than I had when I arrived. Um, so negative stitching at the library. Um, anyway, but I got it all back in and I only had a little bit left to do on this flower, so I did that. So yes, that is the entire amount of stitching that I got done at the library. I am saying to myself at the next stitching at the library, I should really just come home and sit down and finish this thing. Um, so I have one more green thing and, you know, the blob over here. And then there's maybe two or three left to go and then I'll have it finished. Um, and it can go into the pile of things that Cheryl don't get excited. The time has not yet arrived. I'm gathering several projects that, um, cause Cheryl has promised that she's gonna help me with some of my soft finishing. Um, and I'm planning on having several to, to do on that pile. Um, once this is done, it will go into the pile of things that Cheryl's gonna help me finish. Anyway, uh, so that is my uh, Penelope's Posies. Maybe in April it will be finished. All right, let's talk about Lent stitching. So this is one of the reasons why there wasn't a video two weeks after my last video, because I got in there and I went, well, I'm doing Lent stitching and I'm really only working on the Lent stitching and hmm, are they really gonna wanna come back every week and go, here, I've gotten a little bit further <laughs> and nothing else. Okay, maybe a little bit further. Anyway, I thought maybe I was gonna do one in the middle, middle but that didn't happen. But, so for, for those of you who have been anxiously awaiting to see my Lent project for this year, several of you will be very disappointed because my Lent project for this year was not working on the Tea Gouverneur Jerusalem. I know there's a lot of you out there that are really big fans, um, but my Lent project this year because I decided to give myself a little bit of a break and put a little variety into my stitching. So I picked up a completely new project. The goal of which was of course to start it, um, start it at the beginning of Lent and have it finished by Easter Sunday. I was a few days behind um, but anyway. So I'm working on Have Faith now, yeah. from the Songbirds Garden series by Cottage Garden Samplings. So this is several years old, 2018. This is from the series they were doing in 2018. Uh, so that's what the cover looks like. Um, I get to say that I was successful in my Lent stitching, so I had it finished. Um, which is great. So here is my version. See, all finished. Now, so generally I did use largely the called for colors. So like the colors for the leaves, the colors in the flowers and in the bird and here in the border are are all the called for. What did I change? I changed the house because, you know, that house is, you know, looking a little yellow based for me. So I changed the house. Um, the fabulous Joanne graciously, um, at one of our stitching at the libraries, she had commented, because um, I'd looked at the other ones, because every, every one of the patterns in this series has a house in it. And so I'd gone through and looked at the houses and picked out one that I thought was gonna work for me. Um, and then I went to the store and nobody had it in stock. And the online ones that you can go, you can see the list of the colors, but the the particular one that this is from, there were several and there were like, 
not exactly sure what it is. And I'd comment on this on the library last year and the fabulous Joanne had said, oh, I have that whole series at home. Let me go home and check for you. And she graciously sent me a note and gave me the colors, which I dutifully wrote down and put into the project bag. Um, so uh, the roof and hard to see, but around these windows and the door is um, blue jeans by Weeks Dye Works, which conveniently is the same blue that's in the flowers and here in the border. Um, and then just white for the center of the windows. And then the house itself is Weeks Dye Works Blackboard. So Joanne, thank you so much for giving me those details. I've now put it in. Um, I did change um, the called for color for the word faith. The out, well, A-I-T-H and the outline and the F was Weeks Dye Works Coal. Um, I changed that to DMC 939. And it's hard to tell here, but the centers of those I filled in with Petite Treasure Braid PB04. Had a little debate about making it the gold. You know, I was kind of thinking like, you know, illumin um, illuminated. Yeah, that's what it is. Illuminated Bible pages, you know. I was thinking maybe gold, but I went with the silver because it's such a, a blue palette. I stitched this on 32 count Lugana um, in dark, Winter Wonderland Dark by Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, and again, she does, Dying for Cross Stitch does fantastic pictures on her website. Um, like if you got Winter Wonderland Dark in linen, it would be a much darker fabric. This is Winter Wonderland Dark on 32 Count Lugana. I love it. Um, it's a really fantastic, for me, bluey gray. Um, I might have ordered more of this. Um, my initial, what I, the piece that I had was an 18 uh, by 27 or a fat quarter. Um, I used a, a healthy chunk of it. I still have some left, but I used a healthy chunk of it and decided that this was a really fantastic gray and I was going to need more of it. So I did put in an order for more of this. So in a future video, you will see another <clears throat> chunk of this coming home. But yes, I thought this was, um, this is my first finish for 2024, um, which is a really low number. Um, but a finish is a finish, so I'm going at least we're getting uh, a little bit back on track for that. Um, I did have this in Markup RxP, and of course the great thing is when you get a pattern and you get it into Markup RxP, when I was doing the plans for Lent, um, I could do the, the math, which said I needed to stitch 226 stitches every day. Uh, in order for me to finish this um, for Easter Sunday. Um, so some days I made it, some days I was a little short, some days I made up, like I say, started a little bit later than I was expecting um, and made up for that. Um, but yeah, it was done and complete. So there is my Lent project for 2024. So I think that's great as compared to Jerusalem because at least this one is finished. But, sorry, I'm just having that moment. I should always do a better job of figuring out where I'm going to put stuff at the end. Um, I did finish it a little bit early. I was secretly hoping I was maybe going to finish it a week early, and that didn't happen. But I did finish it um, earlier than Easter Sunday. Which meant, for those of you who've been waiting, I did pull out Jerusalem to work for the next, uh, for the remaining several days before um, we hit Easter Sunday. Now, I will say I spent a healthy amount of time on Good Friday. Um, none of you will remember this, but um, I was watching uh, some of the videos on Markup RxP 
and like there was a video on what happens if like anyway I was talking about how to make some of the symbols clearer and I re uh, scanned in the pattern for Jerusalem using the tips and tricks from that video and it was dramatically better I don't remember what the tips or tricks or how it was it was dramatically better than the first version I had and in my head I'm sure that last summer I was supposed to be sitting out on the glorious balcony and have worked on um, moving the stuff that was already complete into the new one which I did not do at all so I took a healthy chunk on Good Friday and said before you start work on this again make sure that you've got this that's not true I did do a little bit before Good Friday but Good Friday I sat down and spent a healthy chunk of what could have been stitching time moving the markup from the not great version to the much much better version and so I feel really great and I got most of it set up I've got a couple of pages there's a total of 10 pages in the pattern I I've got eight out of ten complete at this point in time getting it completely set up um, and also um, by putting it into um, getting it all set up in the new version it also means I can now use the enhanced features in markup RXP which lets me take that and turn it into a one page pattern so you can work across multiple pages and that whole anyway which is great love 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 it love 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 it um, anyway <laughs> we'll get back to that I was like oh yeah I should do that I'll have to make sure I do that so for those of you who don't know and I forgot I was gonna check so I could remember what the names of the buildings were uh, this is what uh, the Jerusalem pattern is I bought this as a kit I'm using all of the kit materials oh I also sat down and spent time on Good Friday because when you buy a Taya Gouverneur kit you get um, it comes with DMC floss but there are no DMC numbers there's just symbols and 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 the threads so I also sat down and with my color DMC color card and figured out what all the DMC colors are for the threads and wrote them down so yes a healthy like if I'd stitched during that I would have gotten a lot more done but I feel really good about where everything is now um, anyway and it's looking great up great markup RXP anyway uh, but I did get I did get a bunch of progress on this so here comes the gigantic Jerusalem okay so because it's been so long since many of you I'm actually gonna see if I can't bring this down a bit more okay so what did I work on well the funny thing is I worked on some green that's now been rolled up and then I came up and I was working on here because originally when I started working on I was like going okay let's see if I can't get page um, four done so this is page three which is a hundred percent done this is page four and then there's one more page which is page five and so I in my head when I started on this I was gonna say okay let's get all of page four complete and then I can move on to page five but then I spent all my time on Friday and got everything into markup RXP and it's all set up ready to go which means I can now work across both page four and page five simultaneously so I'm now in the process of saying let's work top down across both pages and see if I can't get both page five and six completed this year ting 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 so um yeah so a lot of down here and everything over here all of that has been stitched so this is the fiddly bit it's all the greenery and I'm making myself stick with the starting at the top and work my way down it's gonna be so fun when I hit the building here 
here's the building. No, I'm on the wrong side. I'm gonna say if that's not the building. This is the building over here because there's a lot of there's a lot of um, a lot of stitches all using similar the same colors, so it'll go a lot faster than these ones. Like there's colors now. It has been fun because I've been knocking off some colors, right? So you know I can go in and I can select a color that's up here on the top and go. You know there was one color that I picked it and it's like there's 48 colors left to go on between pages four and page five and I got them all completed so I've been knocking off some colors uh, which has been great there's more of those colors you know in the rest of it um, but when you flip back from the one page back into the individual pages you get to see that I've knocked off like there are some colors that I've stitched here on the top that I won't need to use again for all of page five or all of page four and page five which is great so working my way down it this is not going away yet I have plans to continue working on this in April and see if I can't make some more progress on that like I say I've um, I think I've I've come up with the goal that over the course of the rest of 2024 I want to make sure that I've got both page four and page five um, completed. So as of right now, according to Markup RxP, I have 33% of this project complete, which I was feeling pretty good about. Um, this page is 100%. This page is about 70%, and I have no idea what this page is, but I was overall really impressed that when I got to um, when I looked at the looked at the info page that it said I was at 33% I was expecting that number to be like about 28 I know why 28 I have no math to support that um, but yeah I was quite happy that 33% of it is and then I went if I finish those two pages I don't know what that number will be but yeah so for those of you who enjoy seeing Jerusalem, this is not going away. Um, I had to roll it up just because I needed to get all of this stuff stitched. Um, and so I'm expecting by the next Floss 2 video, I will have rolled this, this up and I'll be working further on down here and you'll get to see more of what's happened down here. But like I say, there was some green that was worked on down there until I decided to just go up and go up and do all of this fiddly bit and then you're going to hit a building and it's going to feel great and then once you get through the building then you're going to be like I'm in the home stretch to finishing page five and six and that'll feel good so yeah came back pulled out Jerusalem um but it is not going away I expect to continue working on this in the month of April All right, let's talk about uh, stitching at the library. I do have the library booked. Um, I need to get the email out to people. Um, I was looking, I'm a little bit delayed getting the message out to people because sometimes when you wait, for some reason, some of the bookings cancel for whatever reason. Um, and I was going to check to see if some of it had canceled and it hasn't. So the next stitching at the library is in two weeks. Um, so Sunday, April the 14th from 1.30 to 4.30 at the Crowfoot Library um, is where the next stitching at the library is going to be. Um, if you are new to the Crowfoot Library, as you come in, through the front doors, head to your right, head as far down, hit that wall. And as you come across that wall, um, there's there's a room in there and, and we'll be in there. Um, so um, as always, you don't necessarily need to let me know. If you're in the greater Calgary area, feel free to drop in. You do not have to come and stitch for all three hours. Come for a bit, come for a lot. It's entirely up to you, but we'd love to see you if you're in the greater Calgary area and can come. So again, that is Sunday, April the 14th at the Crowfoot Library and the address for the Crowfoot Library will be in the notes section down below. 
All right, let's move this back up. Okay. All right. Um, so that is so that's stitching at the library. Let's talk about some stash acquisitions. Now, some of these stash acquisitions are from you know last year, but I did graciously keep them in a bag. There, there's more left to, there's more left to show. So you know, doling them out. All right, this is, this is a funny bag of things. So these are from Michaels. These are glass beads. They were hugely on sale when I picked them up. I know what I want to use them for. I'm not going to tell you because until I actually get the projects done, but I have an idea for what I want to use these for. Like I say, they were horrifically on sale. So um, the Michaels that I was at had a grand total of three of these. So I bought all three of them. All right. It's the oddest collection of things and I didn't do a very good sort before I got on this video. So, you know, welcome to live sorting ish. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in uh, late December, because I was kicking myself in the tuchus saying you need to get yourself back on track and get back into stitching and maybe doing some planning will, you know, make things, you know, come together for you. So I was looking at some of the projects that I have. And um, I, have a, I have a pattern um, by Mary Hickmott. Um, I, okay, I have a couple of patterns. One of which you've previously, I've shown you, is the sweet bell pull thing which I've not yet worked on so this is also a pattern by Mary Hickmott it's to make a cushion so specifically to make a cushion um, but it calls for anchor threads and I decided what I should do is I should kit up the project it is not currently sitting in the five-year plan anywhere yet um, but I decided I should kit up the anchor threads for it because I don't have a vast collection of anchor threads. Um, but here are, you know, they're, they're the anchor colors for the pillow. See, it'll be, <laughs> it's a color palette that appeals to me. So I went out and got all of the threads um, to do that project, all anchor threads. Um, I got these, um, the thread, the next batch that you're going to see are all items that I purchased at uh, the Stitching Corner in Cochrane. They do not have an online website, so I can't do links. Um, but they do mail order things. Okay. And then, you know, because if you're going out and you're doing shopping, you need to do um need to come up with a list of things so i have a list of random threads so weeks dye works actually let, let me do this this will be easier okay technically i got two skeins um i was getting some grays from weeks dye works this is graphite, uh, blackboard, and chia. So I got those. I got um, classic colorworks, Milady's teal, and ladybug. And then uh, 
I um, had a gift card uh, to iTunes from my brother um, and I used it to purchase a couple of patterns from the Silk app. Um, trying to remember what their what the store name. Anyway, so I got a I got a couple of patterns on there, and I decided I should kit those up as well. Um, so while I was at Cochrane, they do not have a large um, Soie d'Alger selection. But I thought while I was there, I would just go and I would see what they had. So I got, um, these are all for, so I got two patterns off the Silk app. I think I tried to kit them both up, but anyway. Here's some of them. I this I did not get all of the, the required colors for the projects um, from them, but I got these six skeins. So those are what those are for. And now that I've shown them, it means I can actually, you know, get them sorted out into a bag. Now. Okay. <laughs> On a previous visit, um, they had ordered in some charms for me. Um, so this is a maple leaf, um, and I needed four of them. They brought in four of them, but somehow between um, uh, me arriving in the store and us discussing them and me getting ready to check out, one of them got misplaced, which is totally fine. It wasn't a project I was working on imminently. So three of them came home, but, you know, not surprisingly, at some point they found the fourth one and set it aside for me. So there's my my Canadian maple leaf so that I have the fourth one I need. And then I went on a weird random um, random beads bead thingy just to put into stash other than this one. So Mill Hill Glass Treasures 12 Twelve two nine nine. This is clearly you can't even really see them. This has got to be for something. I'm having that moment going like, oh, I should wonder if I know what that was. Maybe there's maybe there's a piece of paper back <laughs> back in the other room because I had everything that I was looking for by project. Anyway, hopefully that will come up. These next ones are all completely, you know, random. So I got a bunch of uh, Mill Hill Magnificas in colors that, you know, I could see me using. Um, there's a large number of the Magnifica beads, which have already been discontinued. Um, you know, they still had these. I didn't go online to check to see if these specific colors, but in my head, my recollection was that all of the Magnificas are going to end up being discontinued. So I took some of the ones that they had in stock that were colors that I could see me using. And then I just went on a complete bead, you know, add, add to stash. Um, so these are uh, Delica beads. Um, yeah, so it's great having um, a local supplier of Delicas. Um, I'm not going to give you the numbers, but anyway, so a royal blue. This is more purpley. Burgundy. This is actually like light lavender. Another purple. Just to add to stash. Um, purple. Red. Can never have too many... Uh, Silver and gold. So yeah. That was my end of year. I'm just getting some stuff. This piece of hair is driving me nuts. Um, so those are my stash quisitions for this episode of Floss Tube. Don't worry, there's more stash quisitions in the other room yet to be yet to be displayed. 
Um, all right. Plans. So let's talk about my plans for April. Um, over the course of March, while I was working on my Lent project, I completely um, rethought what my plan for April was going to be. I had a plan for April that from my five-year plan that I was just going to continue on. I have revised that plan. So um, at this point, I'm expecting, uh, I'm hoping to have two new starts in the month of April. I'm hoping to have at least one, hopefully two, possibly three finishes over the course of April. Um, so that's product, that sounds productive. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, I like how, I like how the plan is looking. It's, you know, as with any plan, as any good plan should happen is that you, it probably goes through a couple of variations before the final good version is going. So, um, it's April 1st. I'm looking forward to the project that I'm going to be working on tonight once I get this done and hopefully loading and all that good stuff. Um, and it's another project where I've sat down, I've looked at the project, I've looked at how many stitches I have left to do in Markup RxP, I've figured out a daily stitch count, I've programmed the daily stitch count into Markup RxP so I get the celebratory confetti when I hit that stitch count um, so that, it's, that it will end up being on track for a finish in April, which I'm looking forward to. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Um, so yeah, hopefully a couple of new starts, hope, hopefully it, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm very common. There will be at least one finish, which will make me feel good. Um, hopefully maybe a couple more, one maybe two. Uh, so that's good. Yeah. A couple of starts, a couple of finishes. Wouldn't that be great? And some more stitching on Jerusalem will hopefully also be occurring over the course of April. Uh, clearly that one's not in line for a finish. Um, but more stitches is better and it's like I say I was very encouraged when I looked at the that 33 percent of it was done like I say for some reason I thought I was still going to be in the 20s somewhere so for some reason the 33 percent I found very encouraging and so I'd like to I'd like to get a bunch more don't kid yourself because I was spending all that time getting everything completely perfectly set up in markup RxP which is <laughs> Some people, um, when they're when they compare Markup RxP to what they're doing in Pattern Keeper, just here's a cautionary note. Usually, for the patterns that are coming into Pattern Keeper, you are starting from a digitally derived pattern. Um, the Taya Gouverneur. So, um, for me, why Markup RxP is because when I was originally comparing the two, I I couldn't get a pattern that I had scanned in to actually load into Pattern Keeper and be able to search for the symbols. And that's I re that's what I was really, really looking for, whereas I could do it in Markup RxP. I will say I've become a Markup RxP person. It's kind of like, you know, um, iPhone versus Samsung phone users. like. <laughs> If you started with an iPhone, you tend to always continue getting iPhones because that's where you've, you've got all your apps, that's where you've got all your stuff set up, like like 27 things. And it's not like you can't get them on, on the other devices, but you've become an iPhone user or you've become a Samsung user. I ended up using Markup RxP a lot when I was originally getting into loading patterns into a program because it was the program where I could load um, old patterns that I had scanned in um, and be able to do that search for symbols. And that's what I really, really like about it. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I don't necessarily know that I will be using Pattern Keeper that much because I've got all this stuff set up and, you know, all my projects to date have been set up in Markup RxP and, you know, I'm not doing full coverage ones and 
you know, everybody has their things. If you love Pattern Keeper, that's great. If it's working for you, that's fantastic. So this is not like there's something wrong with Pattern Keeper. I think it's because I started in Markup RxP with some older patterns that I could only get into Markup RxP and I've become a Markup RxP user. Um, so there's that. Um, every Markup RxP has things that are great about it. Markup RxP has things that are probably not suboptimal. They could be improved. Pattern Keeper has things that are fantastic about it. Pattern Keeper has some things that are suboptimal. Like I couldn't get some of my paper patterns in there. So anyway, anyway, <laughs> my hair is driving me nuts. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so there you go. Um, anyway, like I say, the 33% was exciting. All right. So those are the concept of the plans for what I'm going to be working on in April. Um, if you are only here for the cross stitching, thanks for stopping by. If you are here for the crocheting, that's next up. And you're going to laugh. Um, I did take these items um, to stitching at the library. And um, this sounds really horrible, but I let everybody fondle this next one. And everybody loved it because it is delicious. Um, so this is um, pretty much a lap gan. Um, I'm not going to hold the whole thing up. There you go. That gives you the the gist of it. That is um, so. This is a free pattern from Yarnspirations. I will link the pattern in the notes section down below. They also have a YouTube video, which I did watch before I started about this. Um, so this is mosaic crocheting, um, where you're deliberately crocheting, um, you know, down and above other, other crocheted stitches. Um, this is using uh, Bernat Velvet Yarn. Uh, I'm trying to think. Mm, Misty Gray, maybe is this one? I'll. Uh, it'll be in the notes section down below. I'll look it up. Um, the burgundy is the crushed velvet in burgundy. But yeah, and it's just it's fantastic. Um, so I will say um, I did a lot of reading. Um, about velvet yarn and uh, I saw a huge number of complaints and issues and I read all of the blog posts about um, what to do with velvet yarn and how to deal with some of the issues you know worming is an issue for sure um, so I read all of those posts before I started on this um, and so you know there's I haven't it was when I first started on the project, I did find it a very difficult yarn to work with. Very, very difficult. I do find this yarn very, very difficult to see the individual stitches. Um, so a lot of it um, I did by feel where I could sort of go like, okay, yeah, that's the spot. Yep, yeah, there's the spot. Yep, yeah, there's the next one. Yep, yeah, got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if you... Um, if you don't have experience stitching with challenging yarn, if you're a beginner, I don't, I wouldn't say start with velvet. Velvet is hard to, velvet yarn is hard to work with. Um, it did present a bit of a challenge, but I love the end product. I love, love, love this. This is a lap gan to go into the music room upstairs and it's created a problem. Cause now, you know, you know, I did this combination very specifically for that room. <laughs> but now I feel like there should be a velvet, at least lapgan in, you know, multiple rooms. <laughs> you know, I should be able to sit in any room and have a coordinating velvet something there ready to go. Um, so it's, so it's going to be a problem. You're probably going to see a lot of, you know, 
it's it's a very it's a very healthy lap ganache size um, uh, so if <laughs> if someone taller than me so if someone that who was like six feet tall um, they would still find this lap gan size but and it just it it's feels delicious and everybody like I say stroked and went ooh, isn't that lovely so yeah uh, so I will put a link to the pattern and the YouTube video. I will give you the specifics uh, for the yarn that I used. I did buy the yarn off of Amazon. Um, my local Michaels does not carry um, the brunette velvet. Um, anyway, so I got it off of Amazon. Um, the price was comparable to some other online yarn shops that I could find it and you know of course then it came with like speedy shipping now like I say I I crocheted that and it it created a monster so here it is all folded up it created a monster I loved it love love loved it so then I still had some yarn left so then I decided that I was going to make myself a scarf because I went, isn't this combination lovely? You know, and wouldn't this just be a lovely color combination to go with, you know, a gray, I have a gray winter coat. Like, just wouldn't that be lovely? So I did this. This is uh, also a pattern off of... Uh, your inspirations so I will uh, put a link to that I will say when you go and look at the picture on there it won't look the same because they used multiple colors uh, for these center parts um, whereas of course I'm only using the burgundy um, but I will put a link to that free pattern as well so there's my there's my scarf and you know because every scarf needs a hat apparently so then I went and I did this um, I did this hat I got this off of somebody's there's a blog post their written instructions for the hat I would say were suboptimal um, this is a Catherine wheel stitch um, so I won't necessarily put a link to that post because I thought the write-up of the instructions for the hat were not not great. Um, I'll put it on because we're getting close to the end of the video, so I won't take it off. I will say for a hat, I don't love the velvet yarn. Um, I made it. I have put it on, which is why I'm not going to take it off while we're still <laughs> recording the video because my hair goes completely fly away like it will turn into like I'm at one of those things at the science center where you touch the ball and your hair stands straight on end um my my hair turns incredibly staticky so just a cautionary note um, I don't think I would use the velvet yarn to make a hat again um so this is probably going to be my only velvet hat but in case you want to look at what it looks like on There you go. There's my hat. Um, so, like I say, it's staying on. So we're going to wrap this video up fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, so that's what the hat looks like. It's okay. Do I love it? No. Do I hate it? No. Is it just going to reside in the in the in the basket of hats at the back door? Yes. Will I necessarily wear this when I'm wearing the scarf with my gray coat? No, because taking this off and the hair will be completely staticky and fly away and all that kind of stuff. Um, will I potentially wear it, you know, for shoveling snow? Sure. Um, anyway, so there's my hat. Um, so my crocheting plans are... Um, I've said to myself, I really, I have not worked on that basket since I worked on it in January, maybe a little bit in February. So I really need to get back and just finish that project up. Um, 
I have plans in January that I am starting. <laughs> You're going to laugh. It's very me. I'm going to start a multi-year crochet project. Yeah, it's going to take me years to finish it. And I'm starting that, the project off knowing that, and I'm totally okay with it. Um, so next floss tube, you will see the start of that project. Um, I need to finish um, the basket, um, but I might have started another <clears throat> vel velvet yarn project. This, the velvet yarn is going to be a problem for me. I love it. Pros and cons. It, it's a very, like I say, it's a, it's a challenging yarn to work with. Um, but it just feels fantastic. And I'll just laugh because I'll tell you, when my dad saw the scarf, he, he feels it's too big to be a scarf. He, it's, it's too big a scarf for him. <laughs> anyway. All right. With that, we're going to wrap it up. I hope everybody is staying safe. I hope everybody's staying healthy. We have been having, um, like, the the weather here um, has just been all over the map. Um, we've had some, you know, cold temperatures and then fabulously warm and then a huge amount of snow and then, you know, seasonal temperatures. It, it's just, it's been a wild month in terms of um, the temperatures the snow has, there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of snow this month. We are still behind on our, our snow. They are forecasting that we're going to need water restrictions this summer. Uh, so cautionary note, uh, and potentially water restrictions starting as early as May, uh, where I live. Um, so in my head, I'm, I know it's April and everybody wants it to be, um, spring and, you know, seeing it turn into spring and all the good things that come with that. Um, I'm hoping for more moisture just for the health of the province. Um, cause if we're, we need more moisture, I don't technically, you know, I suppose I would prefer that it come as rain as opposed to snow. Um, but I am hoping for more moisture because otherwise, I am very concerned that we're just going to have a horrendous fire season this year. Um, yeah, uh, the forecast is for a very warm summer. Um, so warm summer and very dry ground that does not have a lot of moisture in it does not bode well for fire season. Um, anyway, as always, thinking of the people of the Ukraine, I know I forgot to say that last one last floss too, but I do continue to think about them and monitor what's happening over there. It's, I feel badly that, um, that certainly from a news coverage perspective, it does not get as much coverage here as I feel like it should. Like it's an ongoing major conflict that's going on. Um, anyway, so thinking of the people of the Ukraine, um, you know, as we've all known, there have been a number of issues from a variety of perspectives around the world. So thinking, you know, as always, there are a lot of people to be thinking about. Um, I'm, and it's a, a very big reminder that I'm grateful um, that I live uh, where I live, that I'm safe where I live. Um, I'm appreciative of that. Um, anyway, so with that... I hope you're all getting finding some time to do some stitching. If you're not finding time to do some stitching, I hope you're finding some time to do one of your crafty adventures. Um, I think that's fantastic. And um, stay safe, stay healthy. If you got chocolate for Easter, enjoy that. And I look forward to seeing you um, on my next video. I was gonna say, hmm. Two weeks doesn't sound right because this that Sunday we'll be stitching at the library. So it's probably going to be three weeks and I really am going to try to do better about not having such big gaps between the videos. Because, you know, Lent, my Lent stitching, I was really only working on that. But anyway, there sh hopefully should be more stitching in April. 
So with that, I hope you're doing well and I look forward to seeing you next time.